What's up everyone, I hope you're having a fantastic start to your week. This week we're taking a look at something a little bit different. If you've been following along with me on Twitter or community posts, or if you hung out in last week's live stream, you'll know we're building a Voron V0.2 kit that was provided to us by Fisec. And what better excuse to buy a new tool than a project? This week's new tool is going to be this a heat set insert press, say that five times fast. And this awesome little gizmo was made by 3DZWMAN. That's a bit of a mouthful. I picked it up over on Amazon for $50 to let you guys know whether you should or shouldn't. There's a few things that I really enjoy about this tool and a couple that I found some slight annoyance in. Admittedly, I haven't used this tool very much yet, just a little bit so far. It seems to do everything that they promise. Basically, the entire purpose for a tool like this is to insert heat set inserts into your 3D prints. And the reason that you might want something like this over just using the soldering iron, just kind of free to dangle, is because you're going to be much more likely to have those inserts go in perpendicular, straight up and down, instead of getting off at an angle and getting a little bit cattywampus. And with us getting ready to start building our Voron V0.2 kit from Bisec, I thought this was a perfect time for me to finally get my hands on something like this. Now there are a ton of options online for kits that you can 3D print this yourself. You could scavenge parts from a 3D printer and save yourself a lot of money. I paid about $50 for this one. The reason being I'm cheap and also I didn't want to use my good soldering iron. With this purpose built press, you get a soldering iron and it's, it's not a grand old soldering iron, but it's better than messing up the tip on your good soldering. And they actually give you the different size tips for the heat set inserts. And why you might want to do that is you're not getting plastic all over the tip of your good soldering iron. And you can have a purpose built tool set off to the side. So when you are working with heat inserts, you have the tool ready to go. Let's dive in and let's take a look at how we assemble the tool. As you can see, the overall assembly of this little tool was actually pretty easy. Basically, you bolt the gantry into the base with a couple of M5 bolts. You mount this piece of extrusion, which is like the X-axis for your 3D printer, into the carriage. You adjust the tension for the eccentric nut so that way everything is rolling smooth and perpendicular. You don't have any play in that gantry. Set your handle attach your soldering iron, and you're good to go. The assembly process didn't take much more than like 10 minutes, maybe. The instructions were okay, and that's one of the gripes that I have is the instructions weren't necessarily the greatest. I'm sure if you're watching this video, you're probably intuitive enough into 3D printing at this point. You could probably kind of guide yourself through the instructions, but I would like to see those improved, maybe dive in a little bit more, include some more pictures. I think overall the instructions were only showing a handful of steps, and that's not necessarily the greatest. This is not nearly as difficult as the Voron build that we're about to start. If you're interested in building your own 3D printer, I'm pretty sure you're probably going to be able to muster your way through building the heat set insert press. Once you have it assembled, then it's time to go ahead and switch out the tip on your soldering iron to the heat set insert tip. And then at that point, you can choose your required size. We're going to be testing this with some M3 inserts. Changing this tip out and putting in the heat set insert tip, 
super quick, super easy. That's a plus for this particular soldering iron and the tips that they include. We have it assembled, we have the right tip in our soldering iron, what about actually using it? Well, I don't want to waste plastic or heat set inserts, so I'm actually going to get a jump start and put some heat set inserts into one of the parts for the upcoming V0 build. Other than setting up the right tip, we had to adjust the temperature on the soldering iron. Now that is one point of grievance that I have. When I plugged the soldering iron in and turned it on for the first time, it actually defaulted to like 350 degrees Celsius, which for installing heat set inserts into ABS or ASA, I'm not sure what material these parts are in. Fisec included them with the kit. 350 is way too hot. When you're going through normal use of this tool and you're installing heat set inserts, you're going to want to be right around the melting temperature of your plastic so that way you're not actually burning it. So I did have to adjust the temperature on the soldering iron down and I took it down to 235 degrees Celsius. Might have been a little bit hot, might have been a little bit cool. I found the installation of the inserts super satisfying and it actually went pretty well. Now that's where my overall biggest gripe that I have with this whole thing is. The soldering iron, you could not adjust the temperature by pressing and holding the button. You had to manually click it every time. So I had to click the button over a hundred times to get the temperature changed. Minor annoyance, but such is life. I only paid $50 for this kit and that did include the soldering iron as well as the tips. The key night amongst you might have noticed that during the installation of the very first heat set insert into the mini stuff burner housing, I actually melted a small part of the printed part because the tip got in the way. Hopefully that doesn't affect performance, but we'll see. Let's talk about the price of this particular heat set insert press. It was only about $50 and I'm seeing others ranging from the same $50 price point to 80 ish dollars. My original plan was I was actually going to buy the individual components from Adafruit and build one very similar to this myself, but it would have cost $30 more. I think that $50 is probably the right price point for most people if they want a tool like this. And it is a really specialized tool. Most people in the 3D printing scope are probably not installing a lot of heat set inserts. And up to this point, I myself have not installed a lot of heat set inserts, but I wanted to make my upcoming Voron build much easier. And I like specialized tools. Anytime that I have the opportunity, I'm jumping on it because I like tools, I like to collect them, and something that I got from my grandfather, which he was pretty intrigued when I showed this little guy to him, so that's kind of cool too. The assembly was easy, the quality is pretty good, everything seems to be in order, and the first use was successful, aside from the damage to my one part. That begs the question though, who exactly is a tool like this for? And the answer is not everybody. Not everybody needs a heat set insert press. It's getting really hard to keep saying heat set insert press. If you find yourself assembling a lot of 3D printers, if you're one of the people who really enjoy building Vorons, you might find this a little bit less fiddly than just using your soldering iron. Or you might might find it a big inconvenience. The reason that I got it outside of my upcoming Voron build is I'm actually looking to start utilizing heat set inserts in more of my particular 3D designs. I do enjoy designing printable models and I really enjoy making the things that I come up with and design. And these heat set inserts are a fantastic way to add a layer of professionalism and strength to your 3D printed parts. I mean, just look how good this looks. While it's true, these inserts, which are commonly used in injection molded parts, aren't strictly necessary for most applications. And most of the time you can actually just go ahead and tap your screws directly into the printed part. Very similar to my cup holder adapter for a Yeti coffee mug, wherein I just tap the screws directly into the 3D printed part. I will say when you're running a longer screw into a part, running directly into the plastic is actually quite a lot of friction and does make it kind of difficult as you get further along the process. So these brass inserts 
are actually gonna be a lot easier to screw into. And it also makes your connection more reusable. And instead of fatiguing the threads that you tap in with a screw into a plastic part, you're going to have way more repeatability and you're going to be able to reuse that fastener more by using a heat set insert because you're not fatiguing that plastic, you're using a metal on metal connection. A brass is softer than the steel that's used for most screws and bolts. So the brass would probably give way before your screw, but it's much more repeatable and it's much more consistent. And if you're curious to learn more about the heat set inserts, Stefan over at CNC Kitchen did a fantastic video on the topic. And that was before I knew about like even the Vorons using them. That's gonna be linked below in the description. And I highly recommend giving that a watch. He's a fantastic creator. And I've learned so much from watching his channel over the years. And that's part of what initially got me interested in the heat set inserts. In fact, on his store, he sells his own brass inserts, which are super high quality. And then also tips for soldering irons. So that way you're not messing up your good soldering iron tip. Overall, I don't think this tool is for everybody. I'm not even sure necessarily if I'm going to need it or get the use out of it. But at $50, if it's going to make my life easier when I'm thinking about using inserts for parts that I design, or if it's going to make building more 3D printers a more streamlined process, I am all about it. I mean, I figure probably half the cost of this is probably just in the soldering iron. And what's really interesting about this carriage that they did is you could very likely design your own adapter for your own soldering iron. So if this one burns out, you could probably just go ahead and use your own, which that is really interesting. Although I don't necessarily think I want my TS-100 to live in this full time. So what do you think? Is a heat set insert press something that you're going to add to the shopping list? Let me know in the comments below. Do you think this is a necessity, a must have? Or is it just plain silly and I'd be better off to do these freehand? I guess we're gonna find out during the printer build if it frustrates me or not. If you made it this far in the video, you are an awesome individual and I appreciate you greatly. Recently, we celebrated hitting 600 subscribers here on the channel and I'm very grateful for that. If you found this video useful, be sure to give us a like and share it with a friend who might be interested in heat set inserts. And if you like what we're doing on the channel or you don't wanna miss my upcoming Voron live stream, be sure to go ahead and subscribe. I really appreciate you guys hanging out. Have a great rest of the day.